Welcome back. This is your news preview this morning on K24 TV. As always, you like your views on the news uh, and the big stories of the day. This one, of course, from every single quarter, people just talking about this very rotten murder, most foul, uh, of course, as far as the Wilikimani murder is concerned. You can chime in on this uh, as well. But we're also talking about the constitutional reform debate that has been taking place. The referendum story that you've seen in every political rally has taken different forms. But at the end of the day, the big question being asked is, is this really our process for our benefit or is it the politicians? looking for a way to forward their agenda. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Looking at a document that had been hailed as one of the most progressive and well-crafted constitutions in 2010, but barely a decade on, and already people are clamoring for change here, fix this, fix that referendum to be done, and hence the questions being asked right now. Is it for the citizenry? Is it for the Kenyans? Or is it politicians, you know, looking for a way to amass their political capital as they move towards an election? That's what we want to discuss right here. As always, we want you to tweet us in your questions or comments on what's going on at K24 TV has discussed that uh, right here. And the big question is, even as we look at this particular process right now, the fact that we're talking about referendum, when it started off, it was a question of if there's a referendum that will happen, the handshake happened and it evolved to when this referendum happens. Now that the BBI task force is writing the reports, it's maybe the referendum might happen. What's going on here? Because we're looking at it morphing as to what the political climate is of the day. Is this a politician question or is this the citizens who are being served by this referendum right now, Joy? The current push as it stands, whichever vehicle you're looking at, is driven by a political ambition. And that for me is part of the problem. Because when we were writing um, in the run-up to the 2005 referendum, and the run-up to the 2010 referendum, one of the things that we tried to do as much as possible was to get Wananchi to be heard. But you saw the Wananchi producing one, one document, and then it goes to Naivasha, it comes back, has substantial changes, but by that time it's too late in the process to do anything about it, and so it becomes, just pass it, we'll fix it later. Mm -hmm. Politicians have already demonstrated that when they're in power, they cannot be trusted. And you know, the unfortunate thing is that some of those who are in power and are passing it, now on the receiving end of it, and that's why you see something like the handshake becoming important. Because when we're discussing, shall it be parliamentary, shall it be presidential, people are very adamant of the system that they wanted because they were seeing themselves benefiting mm -hmm. or not benefiting from a particular system. When we have that as an end, uh, as, a, as the, the end in mind, then the process becomes flawed. And it is what I see now. If you're writing a constitution because you have a certain agenda that you want to accomplish, then you lose a lot in the translation in between. Mm -hmm. We have laws that we have made and put in place. For example, the discussion of the Sexual Offenses Act, where you pass something because you want to prove some points, but you forget in the middle that there's a process. And then at the end, it becomes, we need to change it. The current clamor right now, even if we do it, will be in the same same position in the next three or four years it will be this still doesn't quite work this doesn't quite work mm. and Mashimua here has hit the nail on the head we haven't even fully <coughs> implemented what we have i was very active in the no campaign mm -hmm. i ran this country telling people vote no to this constitution because there were fundamental flaws and one of the fundamental flaws was what we are seeing now we had just too many people on payroll too many commissions why are we putting a commission to do government functions for example, we've talked about IPOA. We've talked about the Police Service Commission. We've talked about the Human Rights Commission. All those three institutions are independent bodies, but what they're doing is actually a function of government. Right. Why didn't we just find a way of making government more accountable to do what they're supposed to do? We are paying all these other people to do what government is supposed to do, and now they have been captured by government. So I think our discussion ought to be more nuanced about not what the politicians want. And I like the trend I'm seeing with Pungu Zamzigo. People are saying, there's some things we like about it, but look, there's also problems with how you're trying to get it done. It has to be a process that is driven by Kenyans. If it's not driven by Kenyans, I hope politicians are smelling the coffee. Whatever initiative it is, however well-intentioned it is, it will not see the light of day because people have gotten to a place where a little bit wiser and we are a little bit more vocal than we used to be before. Honorable Keone, you're the chair of the CIOC, and I'll just pose it this to you. Do we need this referendum, or is it uh, a good talk at a political rally? You sit on both. You'll be uh, at a political <laughs> rally as a politician, you'll be at the chair. Yes. Is this what they need at this stage to rouse the emotions? I am the chair and also a politician. Yes. Yes. And I want to just uh, mention to my sister here, you will not be able to move this without politicians. It is true. It's our experience we had uh, during 10th Parliament where mm -hmm. he was serving. 
that uh, however much you deal with these uh, issues of registration outside the political mm -hmm. sphere, you can end up just talking about them. But until you, you know, bring them right where they belong, uh, you are not likely to achieve much. But it is very useful to have inputs from moreover. But eventually it will be driven by politicians, mm -hmm. uh, whichever way. So I, I think we also have to stop um, uh, just um, bashing politicians because if you do that, you start arenating and uh, not getting to that point. But I hear her, and I agree with uh, quite a bit of what she has said. Let me jump in on that also yeah. as well as we talk about the politicians, because yes. as the Punguza Mzigo has started going around the county assemblies, mm. I remember Honorable Mbadi talking about the fact that even if it succeeds there, if it comes to the House, they have no time limit as to when they need to look at it, so they shall sit on it for as long as they want, <laughs> mm. and no one can stop them. So mm. when you see that type of talk coming from a person, mm. you really wonder, do for, they have our best interests at heart? For the reason that, again, we, we stopped at a point and stopped implementing the Constitution. Because implementing the Constitution was not just passing the laws as provided for in the schedule. It had also a question of living to the spirit of that Constitution. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what Badu was trying to exploit is perhaps the lack of a referendum law. A law that says within this time, you must move to this time. The principles are there in the Constitution, mm -hmm. but Parliament yeah, needed to have moved to the next stage to ensure that uh, right. these are the timelines, this is how you tidy up the process, this is mm -hmm. how you tie up all these uh, rules uh, uh, ads. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is again something that is before us. In fact, after uh, at 11.30, we, uh, we will be in a committee considering the referendum law. Mm -hmm. And it's a committee that uh, my good friend and former chair of PSC has been before mm -hmm. and shared a lot of issues, mm -hmm. um, very useful things. But let me say this. I believe that uh, amendment to the constitution is nothing wrong. We need them as we move along. But if we also uh, perhaps put the same effort and energy uh, towards implementing what is already provided for, a number of the issues we are saying that we need to amend may not come, may not arise. Mm -hmm. There is a lot, um, and I, 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 I belong to the S yes, uh, group, I still belong to the S, yes. and even the team that belongs to the NO had a point. The issue that we didn't address ourselves to is what is this that we needed to deal with then? Uh, and now we learn the risk of, you know, uh, being overshadowed by the need for a referendum, an amendment, but not again the specifics as mm. to what is it that is not working. Mm -hmm. Outside what we have not implemented. And if we now, if we were to give ourselves like a year or two to just focus on what or did we want to achieve mm. with this constitution, a number of the issues that we are saying we want to amend would just fizzle mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. The, and again, we must uh, avoid, uh, avoid being uh, taken over by some cliches like Puguza Mzigo. Because mm -hmm. then, which Mzigo are you Puguzaring? And when you read, that, read the document that was Puguzaring, actually it ends up uh, clogging the system and uh, in Augeza Mzigo. Mm -hmm. you know? In fact, the Mzigo that is being Puguza, Puguzwad, if there is such a... Such a uh, mm -hmm. It's, the, it's the, the relevance of the Kenyan in this law-making process, in the constitution implementation, in the governance. If you read, that, if you read it, you are, you are removing Kenyans from the center, further and right. further away. So they have become the Mzigo. And you'll be addressing that in a bit, Honorable Kenya, yes, as well. But, as but I wanted to say that uh, we, may, we may be in need of uh, amendments, and mm -hmm. we do, because this document... Was not, it's not, it's not uh, even if again I have said before, if you can give Kenyans an opportunity to amend the, the Bible or even the Quran, <laughs> they will amend it. <laughs> they, they will amend it. But uh, it is not that we, I, I am a bit worried when all of us again get carried. Mm -hmm. Because it's like some of us politicians cannot come up with a national agenda on how we can improve the lives of Kenyans so that you are given that platform to deliver on. You have to go back to the issue of constitutional mm -hmm. amendment. You fight for the constitution. Because that's the only politics that you know. Okay. Just like when we had the heart check. There are some politicians who had perfected in insulting Raira. Mm -hmm. And when the heart check came, they fizzled that away. Okay, Honorable, can I, I hear you on this need, particular one? We need one. to be very, very careful about it. Okay, I'll bring in Honorable Mohammed on this as well. Um, with the constitution that we passed in 2010, mm -hmm. um, did we pass it with the flaws for political expediency? And now that, uh, as Joy said, we are not in power, mm -hmm. now it's biting us. So, um, uh, first, uh, constitution making is a political process. So you really cannot take the politics out, out of, of it. it. 
but uh, political expediency is very much part of what we are seeing right now. So, so to, ask, to answer the question you asked very directly, I don't think we need a referendum. Uh, if you look at the people pushing for a referendum, they're the, the leaders of the Yes team who mm -hmm. said this is an excellent constitution. If you look at the people leading the, the, the no referendum, mm -hmm. the people who are leading the no team, who say there's a lot of stuff wrong with the constitution. Mm -hmm. so, so that just so tells it's the same you, lines in the political divide. No, no, but different roles now. Uh -huh. The ones who say the constitution were, was, was excellent are those pushing for the referendum and changing the constitution. The leaders of the no team, uh, uh, our <laughs> colleagues, our, <laughs> our colleagues' <laughs> leadership, is that not saying no, the constitution is a good Let's constitution, keep let us exactly. keep it going. Mm -hmm. So it just tells you the, the end is a political uh, 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 agenda as opposed to so we should we should I think go beyond that and ask why do we need to change the constitution mm -hmm. and and cost for example in my opinion cost is a red herring if we were to remove all the commissions and commissions are, are costly and they are and they are not fit for purpose as we intended them so I agree with with my colleague absolutely but we ha say ten commissions typically a commission's budget is about three hundred million. That's a lot of money for a country that's poor, that has a lot of needs. That comes about three billion. If we were going to remove mainly on the issue of cost, take three billion out of our three trillion budget, you haven't really done much. That's a rounding off error. It's a right. lot of money, we really need it. But if your aim was to cut costs, you should be aiming at something that costs 10, 20, 30% out of our, our costs. You don't need to change any loans, it's called corruption. Mm -hmm. It takes 300, 400, 500 yeah, billion yeah. out of, out of our, you don't, we, need, we have all the laws we need to fight corruption. If it is a system, and you'd hear people say we have a presidential system, it, we need to go for a parliamentary system. Systems are like vehicles. They have advantages, they have disadvantages. If you are the driver and you are a bad driver, it doesn't matter how good the car is. So if you don't drive the system well, if you are not right. true to the to the requirements, if you're not true to the laws of the road, the system will not work. We have parliamentary systems. Britain is a parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. Give them uh, Johnson and you see how it goes. I mean, they have things that they never imagined can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, Prime Minister saying, I'll not abide by the law. The US is a presidential <laughs> system. Exactly. Give them Trump and you see what happens. <laughs> right. uh, all sorts of, 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 of crazy stuff. So it's not really the system it is how you use the parliamentary systems are good, presidential systems are good, hybrids are good. And we have had all of them right now in this country. We started mm -hmm. with a parliamentary Westminster type system. We moved to a hybrid system and we have now a presidential system. As my colleague said, implement the system and be true to it. Abide by the rule of law. Right. Let the institutions work, right. whether they work for you at that particular political time or not. Mm -hmm. Finally, we have politicians who really use this for mobilization. So this clamor, or those opposing it, is really about 2022. Mm -hmm. It's really not about what is good for Kenya, what is bad for Kenya. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. right. Let's talk about uh, something you've mentioned there in terms of the costs that we are, are having right now as a country. Corruption being very big and very high on the list in terms of expenditure, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. Pungu mm -hmm. Zamziko talking about the fact that they want to fast track these corruption cases. It takes 30 days in court if it's appealed, <laughs> 21 days. And a citizen sees that and is like, yes, I want, if Jeff is taken to the dock, not to have this case on in 2025. That is very cosmetic. Because lack of evidence. That is very cosmetic. Why is that honorable, Mohammed? That's very cosmetic because, you see, you also want to... Look, when you agree on a system, you need to agree to all it is, uh, it is, uh, it is rules and regulations. The system we have, we have chosen is you are innocent until proven guilty. It's called the presumption of innocence. The mm -hmm. lawyers know it. Mm -hmm. uh, both my colleagues are. Mm -hmm. uh, now... It is the police, it is the investigators, it is the prosecutors to do a very thorough job. Very thorough job. It's not just being accused. It's not just assuming I could very well know that you are a thief. That is not good enough for the system we have chosen. It's an right. adversarial system. You have a prosecutor to prove you guilty. You have a judge to be, a, to be sitting as a neutral arbiter. Right. The judge might even know that you're guilty, but he really cannot convict you until the prosecution has done its job. Right. That is a system we have chosen. Mm -hmm. If we want to go for a different system, that's a different matter. 
but that is a system we've chosen. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, populism, you know, is, it doesn't help. You ultimately, it requires substantial profession, professional work mm -hmm. for somebody to be convicted of a crime. Right. Mm -hmm. National police service. Uh, and then institutions, <laughs> and then institutions that work. Back to what you're talking about. And then institutions that work. Yeah, institutions mm -hmm. that, for example, prosecution that works, uh, a police service that works, a judiciary that works, institutions that work. Ultimately, our institutions must work. So, so m most, in fact, if we were to look at implementation, the place we have done the best is in writing the laws. Mweshmua mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and his colleagues have done an excellent job in delivering on all the laws that are required because there's a schedule of laws to be passed. Right. Mm. That they ha we have ticked all the, we have, we have checked all the boxes. What we haven't done is implemented those laws right. mm. or right. implemented them faithfully. Right. And that is where we need to, do, and that is where the hard work is. Right. It yeah. is very easy to say, let us do away with this system. And that mm. is actually very costly. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is a very, actually the most very costly, costly thing. Yeah. That yeah. is why yeah. I'm yeah. saying it's not Puguza and Mzigo, mm. we are increasing the Mzigo. What mm. we should be concentrating on is implementing those laws right. so that the cost of doing things comes down. Right. And that is where the, the issues are. And Honorable Kione, I want to come to you on this as well because uh, for someone watching from Daragua, he's like, uh, my costs are high, corruption is a big story. Every time I open the paper, public debt is rising. Mm -hmm. And those are the issues they want to hear when you talk about this referendum. Is that supposed to fix that? What are you looking at in the constitution to actually address these issues? Because again, I think probably because of how the Punguza Mzigo uh, you know, bill went round, people actually looked at the fact that uh, Honorable Mohammed is a cosmetic, but those are the issues Kenyans have been talking about. When you talk about debt and how he wants that capped, when you talk about corruption and what he said he wants to do in, in terms of us tracking it, in terms of implementation of the constitution, where are we at with that if we shouldn't be going down the referendum route as of now? One is that uh, we must uh, commend the initiatives mm. that have True. been mm -hmm. brought to the table. Puguza Mzigo, there is uh, Ugatuzi, Ugatuzi mm -hmm. uh, there is, uh, I don't know whether BBI is also an initiative in that line, but we will mm -hmm. come to run of it. They are good because they also help us uh, start debating. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it allows the debates to come on the table and we are able to, uh, like we are doing now, right. uh, th think the, uh, through the process. Um, and we cannot quite uh, fault them for having a try. Right. But as we do this, we, of course, there's, the constitution is not done for uh, just a few days and for a few people. It's something mm -hmm. that we would want to be there for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So we also need to be uh, a bit honest. Right. As, uh, yeah. And that is a kind of thing. That's what we are trying to say. When you, when you, it's not that we have anything or I have anything against our court and his team. Right. But they are, they are, these are the issues. Uh, you may look at it this way. The, 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 and we are looking at it from another angle. Um, the people from Dragua and the others will be wanting to know how do we, how, how can we continue borrowing this way? And my answer is, we will continue borrowing this way for as long as, again, the institutional parliament does not function. Mm. If we allow to function, uh, parliament to have become, an, uh, you know, again, a department within OP, mm. where you actually, there, is, there used to be an officer in charge of parliament sitting at second floor of uh, Harambe uh, House. Harambe mm. House. And he would ideally control the even the order paper. Yeah. Before the order paper was brought at 2, <laughs> 2 p.m., he had to go through it and say, these are the things we allow parliament to debate. So we've come Along. from that place to where we, can, we could even generate our order paper and even the business. And we wanted to get to a point where we actually can say, this is the business, but our business to do is to ask the government, why do you want to borrow? And to tell mm. the government, we are not going to allow you mm -hmm. to borrow. Right. For parliament to do that, that independence needed yeah. to continue uh, being protected. Right. What I now see is that when parliament, and this is something I must blame the media also, not that the parliament has not played their role, but this is something that uh, when, when uh, the whole country is uh, incited against members of parliament, yeah. mm -hmm. and the executive, every time you see the executive, uh, they are saying, look at these members of parliament. Kenyans do not know the, what is it that the executive want to achieve? <laughs> they are actually trying to show the members of parliament looking very bad. So that when we tell you you cannot borrow, they will say the same lot is telling us not to borrow. I can see there is this, uh, this you see, mm -hmm. about the parliamentary this. fund. Yes, yes, about the yes. parliamentary fund, the issue of uh, stopping judiciary from coming to tell us stop this debate. We are not, it's not that we are saying parliament cannot be uh, checked. But if we have an issue of how do we stop parliament from borrowing, being debated on the floor, and the executive have taken hold of the judiciary, 
they will go to the courts and get an injunction stopping parliament from stopping the executive from doing what they are doing. Right. So when what we are doing through this, and we, we, I think we'll push this to the end, uh, this uh, builds, mm. is we are trying to say, uh, judicially, allow us to debate and to find, finish what we were debating. Right. Once we have the product out there, charge it. If you think it should not have come from parliament, kill it out there, but don't kill the, 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 the debating, because so that's what we go to do. The independence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you say that you need a parliamentary FAD, it is because if, you are, if your FAD is being controlled by the executive, mm -hmm. and you start doing laws, passing laws that they are not happy about, they will just kill the FAD. Mm -hmm. So this independence of these institutions comes, and the cost, if you look at the cost, the other day you are looking at the figures, and as he has said, you are looking at three billion. The budget for parliament is at seven billion shillings, including the development that is going on. Mm -hmm. If you look at it again, is the the one or three trillion shillings that how much is it? Where is it that we are losing money? Is it the five hundred billion shillings that we are spending on the current within the executive, or the that seven billion shillings that we are spending to have parliament hold okay. institutions to account? And you go through the, the, the if you go through the, the line, you see, for us in Parliament to be able to operate in committees and even to be in Parliament, you come through a political process up through the political parties. We have the Registrar of Political Parties who is held in accounting capacity for eight years by the executive, so that a she acting mm -hmm. eight years, so that she <laughs> is not able <laughs> she is not it. able to ensure that the <laughs> political parties are strong enough. So it's a real independence issue it's here. Strong enough to send members in parliament who are independent who can go and check on the executive. So it's really a corrupt of thing and it is a really worked out. And I want to tell you, it is not this executive. It's any executive. Even if I was to, if we had succeeded with Musaria, this is what we will be doing. Yeah. And that is why we needed the parliament to check on everybody. Yeah, okay. Because I, I as an executive, you really want to be in charge okay. and Honorable drive Jody. it yourself. I hear you. And because we have uh, three minutes uh, before we go to the break, there's also one other issue that has been spoken about, and Honorable Mohammed had also alluded to this, uh, this whole system talk. We want a parliamentary system because uh, this will uh, make sure the winner doesn't take all ethnic antagonism will be sorted out with this, as opposed to the pure presidential system. Three minutes very shortly on this one. Again, populist, or are, we, are there real issues we need to look at um, as we go to a possible referendum with that question in mind? This is one of those panels I'm so privileged to be on because I'm getting such an education this morning. <laughs> but one thing I must agree with my seniors, my learned seniors here, is it doesn't matter what type of system we have in place. It matters the quality of leaders we have driving the system in place. And that is something that I... In fact, the professor of politics who told us, my my mm -hmm. and in Kenya, that's something that we suffer from. There's um, a, a point that um, Mwashimiwa made here about um, people being incited against parliament. Sometimes that is true. There is an incitement. But on the other hand, there are times when we have expected parliament to rise to the occasion and be a defender. And what we have seen is people towing the party line. Mm -hmm. The days when we had mavericks who were bold enough to speak truth to power, are becoming fewer and fewer and there are less and less people who are willing to stand up and actually speak the truth even when it goes against what is popular with their party leader. Sometimes, and I've said it here before, I don't blame on Raborela sometimes for the things that he does because he's not sitting in parliament. We did not elect him. But when you've got people in the house who do things and then they blame it on this is the party line or if they're blaming DP Ruto for this or if they're blaming the president for this, I look and I'm like, those guys aren't sitting in parliament. You are. Mm -hmm. And in the kind of system that we have, you have a majority party and a minority party, but you're supposed to be one institution. Mm -hmm. So is it a, a, a something that where we need to break the system and put another one? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It's our leaders who need to understand. Okay. When people give you a mandate, they expect you to deliver on it. Mm -hmm. And this delivering on it, if, it's anything, if it means anything to you at all, should be a matter even of personal pride that you say, I mean, you're one of the parliamentarians who can walk away and say, you know what, while I was there, I actually left a mark mm -hmm. in this country. But there's some parliamentarians, when they're gone, if you distill what they did for Kenyans, what is it? So it's not the system. Mm -hmm. Our leaders just need to rise to the challenge. And that goes back also to me as a voter. There you go. Who are you putting in place? Honorable Kioni, I'll bring you in on this uh, as well in the sense that some people have said that the only way we make sure that every five years we don't go down the ethnic line, lots of division, we're seated here as friends for four years, but on the fifth year, there's problems, massive problems. 
and a parliamentary system will alleviate that problem away from How? the citizenry mm. to the house and they will fight it out from that particular level. True or false? I think one of the things that we must accept is that uh, this country, and I saw there was some demonstration yesterday from a community mm. that I didn't know. The Sanguer. Uh, yes, I must apologize <laughs> yeah. that I, I didn't quite, uh, and they want to be recognized as, an, I think, yes. the 45th, 47. Whatever and number. Some land in the forest. So, we, <laughs> uh, so we, we are a country made up of those uh, ethnic uh, groups. And right. um, we just have to live. Uh, and uh, and uh, one of the things that I remember at Naivasha mm. we struggled with was the inclusion of the word ethnic groups mm. in the constitution. Mm. And we said we must have it there yeah. because it's true. That, that, that's the country we are. Absolutely. Well, let's recognize that we have this uh, ethnic block. Mm. And now we must also recognize that they, are, they actually become vehicles for political mobilization. mobilization. Mm -hmm. It's the reality that we are in. The but the, the joy is that when you read this constitution that we have, it recognizes that and gives uh, attempts to give solutions to those uh, that pro that issue because we must live and that's the way we are going to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to live. Parliamentary system and again is an issue that uh, I think we we had quite some debate on it was one of the very divisive issues between parliamentary and presidency the president. and the presidential system. I I think that if we were to go uh, parliamentary, we may want the Kenyans will feel that they are actually part of the executive. If you were to get members of parliament into the executive, that seems to be one of the issues that we need to uh, debate on. But one of the issues that informed us is this. When I am appointed the minister for transport or roads, and I assume the office at uh, the hill, the first thing that I ask is, what, how is the road structure in Daragua? Mm. <laughs> and in the neighboring or Karao and Jorok, if I'm, uh, I have a bigger mind, I'll go to the county before I'm forced to remember there is Madeira. Right. So we were saying, remove these politicians from managing some of these aspects because they go village, they go local immediately. And for the reason that I want to get votes for the coming uh, period. Uh, so we say then, they bring professionals, bring individuals yeah. who can look at the country yeah. as one constituency. It has helped, but with some difficulties here and there. So there is room. I think there is need for us to look at presidential, vis-a-vis -vis parliamentary. There is another one uh, issue that I want to throw in. That one of the other things that is coming is that in the process of having a presidential, pure pro presidential system, we seem to forget that uh, this other person or this other competitor that you had has a political following. And it's huge. In the parliamentary system, I think the issue is that how do we also incorporate this other person who did not win the presidency? Right. I think that may be the issues that are coming to them, and we will need to sit uh, even as a committee and see where is it that uh, people have this thought, others have this thought, others have. How do you make sure that you come together okay. and look like we have uh, something? Because I believe the loser or the, the person who didn't win. Uh, you know, now we don't have the oppos uh, opposition. We have right. the minority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This person who never got the presidency, how do you also allow him to contribute to the national development? Because okay. And that's, that's a key something. discussion. Of course, what we'll do before mm -hmm. I take your views on this Honorable Mohammed, you need to take a short break. We're back, of course, with that particular question. Parliamentary system, mm -hmm. hybrid, pure presidential system. What does this mean uh, for all of us moving forward? Because this is supposed to be the solution to all of these elections that come around and people wonder what went wrong after four years. That's what we answer. Of course, we'll pick it up from Honorable Mohammed, and of course, and plenty more as you keep your feedback coming in at K24 TV. This is your news preview, and this is K24 This Morning.